morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of clarinets, cats, and coffee. So this etude is from the Magnani Intermediate Studies for Clarinet. It's number four. So if you go out in the wilds of the internet, you can find this somewhere. It's in public domain. Uh, but channel members and patrons get this for free the day before I post this out on YouTube. So if you don't want to go out and dig for your copy of this or find one on the internet, you can just become a patron or a channel member. Patrons and channel members, Thank you guys so much for supporting me already. So next week, I am going to get to play um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix with the Quad City Symphony out in Davenport. And I'm super excited to do that. And the cool thing is that I'm doubling on clarinet and bass clarinet for that. And so um, I've been kind of working on getting my bass clarinet chops up. And I thought that this little etude would be nice to play on this guy. And I thought I would share that with you guys as well. Um, so the first part of the video, I just want to highlight the fact that two sixteenths plus an eighth note, that is really hard to play evenly. The tendency is, well, there are two, there are two tendencies, okay? So there's, there's the one side, you know, the person who's in a big hurry who will play. And like compress the 16th notes and play them really fast. And um, for whatever reason, that's that's what happens with those. Um, and then if, if you don't fall into that category, but they're not quite even, you probably fall into the other category of playing the 16th notes a little bit too slow and then turning them into triplets. <laughs> Although that does sound kind of cool, but that's maybe a different etude, right? So, uh, so be careful. So the key to this is just subdividing sixteenth notes: da pa da pa da pa and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So that's the key. So you just gotta line up those sixteenth notes and the eighth note precisely with where they land in the beat. So you can use a metronome to subdivide. You could practice clapping and counting. You could even tongue sixteenth notes. So you could do that and get that internalized that way as well. So, um, so that's the rhythmic problem here. Um, the other issue here, if you're fine with the two sixteenths plus an eighth, the other issue is for whatever reason, everybody likes to rush those eighth nodes. <laughs> and compress the time. So you gotta let the awkward silence exist between these staccato eighth notes. So I actually like to play this a little bit um, at a very a more maybe andante tempo. And I actually think this melody is really cool and it would make a really good like fugue theme, like a box style fugue theme, but I, I don't have time to do anything like that. So if any of you guys want to do that and send it to me, I'll play it. But um, anyway, take your time on this and take it at a comfortably slow tempo to see if you can really line up these eighth notes exactly where they're supposed to be in the beat. And then I have just one really big tip if you are doing this on bass clarinet as well, and that is for the high register stuff. If you're having trouble uh, getting your stuff over the break to sound good, um, and if you're somebody who mostly plays clarinet but sometimes does bass clarinet, um, some really good advice that I got recently was to uh, think about voicing these clarion notes an octave lower. Because if you think about it, you know, if you see a top line G, you're going to be thinking about voicing it on regular clarinet, which isn't going to be good for this guy unless you're playing an altissimo G, right? So this is an octave lower. So think about playing that note and how it feels and how it sounds on clarinet an octave lower. So like, again, top line G, it's the same pitch an octave lower on regular clarinet. So if you think about, you know, playing an open G, um, but you know, on this guy, it's the same pitch. And so if you voice for that, you voice an octave lower or even a 12th lower, think about it that way, you'll be more likely to get the note to come out rather than squeaking or over voicing or 
um, overshooting it. Those are my tips for this one. I hope you guys have fun practicing this. Um, I think it's such a cute little etude and I look forward to hearing you guys on whatever instrument you play this on, whether it's clarinet, bass clarinet, saxophone. I know I have some saxophone players out there watching these. E flat clarinet, contra. Somebody on the Facebook group has a contra and I'd love to hear some more contra. Anyway, have a wonderful weekend this weekend. Have a good week next week and as always, happy practicing.